Okay, so you're welcome to add quest ask questions, which would add to uh, the lecture. So again, uh, seven dash four. Uh, again, uh, exponential growth and decay, which is part of our uh, differential equation. So this is a first order uh, differential equation. So again, uh, we're just taking the first derivative. Is basically what that means. We're not taking the second derivative, that'd be second order, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can think of linear, quadratic, uh, those same kind of ideas. That's a first order uh, equation. So sim similar ideas, similar terminology uh, that may not you may not see in this course, but you'll see in other courses. Okay, so uh, let's talk about my soup for a second. Um, again, uh, the soup uh, was changing in temperature. It's changing in temperature. So again, this was what makes it a differential equation is the temperature is changing over time. And again, the rate that it's changing at is actually changing also. Okay, but we're not looking at the second derivative. We're only looking at the first derivative. Okay, so uh, the rate that it's changing at is uh, K. Okay, and uh, K times the difference between uh, the uh, temperature uh, of the soup and uh, the room temperature, which uh, in our book, uh, whoops, I think we use um, S for our book. Uh, Khan uses A for ambient temperature. Okay, and actually uh, the soup was cooling. So, uh, I want K to be positive. I'm just gonna say, uh, I'm gonna throw a negative sign in here just, just to show that uh, the derivative is negative. And again, uh, in this case, uh, T is greater than T of S. So uh, again, uh, positive times a positive times a negative, it's gonna be negative. All right, so this is a separable differential equation, which we know how to find a particular solution to. So we need to put the T's together, the capital T's together, that is, and the little T's uh, on the other side of the equation. I'm talking with my hands. You can't see me talking with my hands. Okay, so uh, again, uh, switch it around. Multiply. Divide by uh, oh, capital, capital T there, right? And then that's going to be equal to minus K uh, D little t. So now I've actually separated the variables, capital T and little t, and I can integrate both sides. Okay, so just do this, boom. And uh, K is a constant, negative one is a constant. It doesn't matter where I throw in the integral sign, but I'm going to throw it in there. Okay. So now uh, it comes the tough part, remembering what the antiderivative is. Um, what's the derivative of natural logarithm? No idea. You don't remember that? No, it's not E, is it? Oh, you're no. close again. E is its own thing that E is actually the derivative of E is E and the integral of E is E. Uh, mm. Yeah, again, E is related here for sure. It's actually, again, what we were missing in the, uh, in the power rule. And the power rule, what we were missing was uh, U to the minus one is what we were missing. We couldn't fill in that hole. So, uh, Basically, it's u to the minus 1. So um, the antiderivative of u to the minus 1 is logarithm. Oh. OK. I guess I forgot to record this. But that would have been great, actually, to have that there. So you are recording, sir. Yeah. Uh, maybe I am OK. You are. I don't know which I'm recording on. It looks like I'm recording on my iPad. Uh, okay, so there we are. Uh, I can continue on the same page, but when I do that, it kind of messes up. Uh, so we get um, new page. 
uh, we get basically the natural log and uh, we have to actually use uh, in our formula booklet cheat sheet, we have the uh, absolute value brackets because we can't take the natural log of zero or a negative number. And again, remember that T is always going to be a little bit more than, let me try my soup again, is always going to be a little bit more than the surrounding temperature. You know, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's exponential decay after all. Okay, so the soup is totally eatable now, what edible, whatever that temperature might be. And then, uh, sorry, I got to go back. Uh, that's the integral of the left hand side. Um, what's the integral of dt? What's the antiderivative of dt? Uh, dt to the. Again, these two things just cross each other out, basically. So, okay. we just have, so we just have T, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So again, uh, minus KT is what I had here. And then uh, I have to have a constant of integration, which again, maybe uh, I didn't finish Khan's video, but uh, I don't know if he gets into that too much, which we're going we're gonna to get into today um, so that we have the complete uh, Newton's law of cooling. All right. So now... Ashley and Yushuan, this is where you want to use E because uh, we want to undo uh, logarithm. So you undo logarithm by raising both sides, basically, uh, as a power of E. Okay, so again, the E and the logarithm cancel out. That's uh, pre calc. So I'm just left with uh, T absolute value of T minus TS. And that's going to be equal to E to the minus KT plus C. Remembering adding exponents is multiplying, right? I'm going to run out of room here. So uh, we kind of seen this before in uh, the exponential growth and decay videos that I, I, I gave you. So it's E to the C times e to the minus kt, because I'm just adding exponents there. And in fact, I'm going to rename this c, because e to the c is a constant also. So that's 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 c. So yeah, one, uh, I want to do one more thing before I go to the next line. Um, I'm trying to get rid of my ugly c there. Uh, that's C. That is actually going to be C. We're going to change that to a C. All right. So uh, T is greater than T of uh, T sub S. Again, my soup is hotter than the room. Just a little bit now. Another sip. Okay. But what's inside the absolute value brackets is positive. So the same. It's the same as saying uh, T minus T S. Because T, you know, T is greater than T sub S. All right, so I can get rid of the absolute value brackets there. That's a little liberty I can do in math. And then I got C as my new constant. And notice that it's not added now, it's multiplied, you know. And uh, that's it. So now uh, I have Newton's equation for cooling. Uh, again, I'm going to make t a function of time and that's going to be equal c e to the minus k t add t sub s to the right hand side so this is my law of cooling except we got a couple of constants here we have to resolve okay we have to resolve uh, this constant and we have to find k okay so K is actually a cooling constant, depending on uh, perhaps uh, the environment. Okay, it could be a metal bar, it could be my soup, it could be the atmosphere. Uh, we're gonna have different cooling constants for different uh, problems that we're gonna have to determine basically uh, by doing um, some substitution. Okay, however, we can find cap capital C right now. Okay, 
So uh, what is capital C? Again, I'm not sure that uh, Khan did this or not. Okay, so uh, let's look at uh, time zero. Okay, uh, sorry, I gotta go back. I forgot what I wrote. Time zero, I have C e to the minus K zero, okay? I really need a bigger uh, iPad here to write on. Uh, that's a zero there. Come on. Plus T sub S is still there. Okay, so again, what is uh, E to the minus K times zero? I mean, yeah. One. What? what? Is it one e because E to the zero is one? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I thought, yeah. So this is just one. So it's just C. So it's just C. So again, I'm gonna change my uh, uh, notation one more time. And, I'm, and you're used to seeing this uh, from uh, Newton again. Uh, for motion, uh, again, uh, capital T sub zero is the initial temperature of my soup. Certainly less than 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now I'm left with just C plus TS. Et voila, C is actually uh, the difference uh, TS minus uh, T naught, sorry. I should say T naught, okay? To be proper British. I said sub zero in American. And again, you're, new, you're used to hearing about R naught and everything uh, with the, our pandemic, but uh, anyway, that's just the notation uh, that they use. All right, so now I gotta go back actually to the original equation. Oh, uh, where was it? Uh, somewhere around here. Oh, yeah, I went right there. I just have, all I have to do is substitute uh, for C now, and I and I have my equation. Okay, so uh, our real equation for Newton's law of cooling is this: uh, C is T S minus T naught in brackets, uh, e to the minus kt plus t sub s. You can hold your applause. All right, so there it is. That's Newton's law of cooling. Okay, again, uh, you can look maybe at Kahn or some other ideas. Uh, there is a Newton's law of heating too. Again, we just reverse uh, these two terms, because in Newton's law of heat, he, he, excuse me, heating, the uh, environment is is hotter than the uh, the item that's that's heating up. Okay, so basically for cooling, this is what we're going to use for heating. I'm just going to I'm just going to flip these two terms. Uh, again, we could go through the absolute value, to think about the absolute value, and and know that this works. And it's still uh, negative KT, even if it's heating, okay? And again, this is your understanding of exponential functions from, uh, from pre-calc. This is just basically the, equa the equations you should be able to use and substitute and find the, the, uh, the heating or cooling constant K, okay? So again, you have the case uh, where my soup was hotter or the other case. Uh, yeah, what do the curves look like? Again, uh, you're drawing with your fingers. You got it in your head. You got a good idea of what it looks like. Again, uh, cooling uh, looks like, oops, that's T sub zero, not, sorry, T naught. Uh, this is uh, the room temperature, TS, which again is like an IB question. And that's going to be a uh, horizontal asymptote to this uh, exponential curve that's cooling. Okay. And this is uh, the independent variable is capital T. And on the vertical axis, you have, uh, sorry, small t, time. And on the vertical axis, you have temperature, which is capital T. 
So that's uh, that's cooling and then heating. Again, uh, T sub S is up here. T naught is down here and it comes up, okay, to the horizontal uh, asymptote like this. Okay, so you can find the temperature of your soup at any time, okay? Given that you, you're, you're given something more than just T naught, you need another point somewhere on the curve to find K. Okay, we only need one point uh, to find K, but uh, we, we, we do need a time and a temperature uh, to solve this. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm done. Are there any questions? No, makes sense to me. Yeah, again, uh, you just have to, to do some uh, practice on... Uh, Stop recording. Goodbye. Uh, yeah.